Well, good morning and welcome as we gather as a Chunga Uniting Church from wherever you are in your homes and lounge rooms, on your devices, uh, all across uh, not only South Australia, but good day to you too if you're watching us, joining us from further afield as well. And we acknowledge a few others from other churches, even around the hills, who might be joining us this morning. So welcome. I greet you in the name of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And with a psalm, Psalm 136, just begins like this. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. So let's sing those words. Our God, who is faithful and strong in this time and at all times, forever. God is good. God is faithful. And you may not be feeling that at the moment, but this morning as we gather to worship, we'll be reminded of that together, that there are so many things to be thankful for. If you're joining us live on the Church Online platform, I invite you now to, as we did the other week, uh, write on the chat some things that you are thankful for so that we can be thankful for uh, to God for them together today. There is so much to be thankful for, the recent rain, for uh, the shelter that we have. Acknowledging again that there are challenges and that life is not easy. We are all walking different journeys, but we should always be thankful. So what are you thankful for today? What are the things that we can be thankful for as we pray together to lift up our hearts, to lift up our eyes to the hills, to Him, a God who is faithful and strong? As you write those things up and note those things on the chat, will you join me? as we give thanks this morning, as we praise our God, and as we confess to Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, You are faithful and strong. We thank You for all of Your beautiful creation, for the sunrises and sunsets, for the rain, for the falling autumn leaves around the hills that we experience at this time, for the beautiful colours, 
and the vibrancy. We thank you for uh, glimpses of sunshine and warmth. We thank you for the community around us, for the love of each other. We thank you for a shelter over our heads. We thank you that in this season we can connect, even in different ways like this, to be community. We thank you for who you are and for what you've done. And the many things that we're listing, we are thankful. And we come again acknowledging your greatness and our failings. So we come to confess our sins. We lay them before you. Forgive us, Lord. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes over and cleanses us of that sin. That we are free. That we can live life in its fullness, in communion and relationship with you. So thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's watch a few notices, uh, things happening in the life of our church as we prepare for today and for the week to come. Later in the service, we will be sharing in communion at home. If you are able, please have some elements ready to represent the body and the blood so that you can join in with us. For those joining us here on Sunday morning, we will be having a Zoom link up at 11 a.m. If you've set up Zoom on your computer or device, you can join us by clicking on the link that will be provided in the chat section of the church online page or on the email this week. Not on our weekly email list? Email minister at achunga.ucasa.org.au and we'd love to keep you in the loop. Contact details are also on our website. If you have a specific prayer request, you can click in the prayer request button or email us. This will be passed into a group who pray for the weekly needs or to our Tuesday night prayer team. For your weekly tithes and offerings, click the donate button or head to the giving section of our website for account details and a form to set up regular electronic giving. Hi families. So this, um, this Saturday is Anzac Day. Um, so that's why I'm filming this video at the Memorial Gardens in Achunga. You can see behind me there's the, the large tank, um, the army tank there and I was planning on hopping out the car and walking around the gardens but it is um, very wet and there's a bit of thunder and lightning going around so I'm just going to stay in the car at the moment. Uh, so this week we do have another Sway page for the kids and we're looking at um, Acts 4 and focusing on generosity. Um, as part of Anzac Day, we do remember all those who have served and all those who have died during wars and battles over history. Um, that's one of the most generous things that we could do for someone is give our life. As we learn over Easter about Jesus, we remembered how he gave his life for all of us um, so that we can um, spend eternity with God. So his sacrifice was for our sins and that means that um, we don't have to be separated from God. Um, we have our salvation through him, through Jesus. Um, so something that I'm so grateful for um, remembering on Anzac Day is how we're so lucky that we um, live in a peaceful country and that we um, don't have to worry about war at the moment um, in our country in the same way that we can be so thankful that we have the peace of Jesus and that we don't have to um, worry anymore about um, our salvation because we've got God in our hearts. So um, as you drive around um, Achunga you'll probably pass this um, tank this weekend and the memorial gardens and if it's not raining hopefully um, you might have a chance to stop and have a look around but just remember that there's no services on this weekend. Um, yeah, so if you get a chance after the service, make sure you check out the Sway page and we've got some videos and um, some activities to do on that page and, um, and be looking forward to any feedback and um, let me know how you go with the page. Alright, thanks, bye.
Good morning. Here we are in our time of prayers of sharing celebrations and prayers of need for people within our congregation and within our world. We've just come past the Easter period and the time of Lent. And traditionally a time of Lent is when we have to give things up or can feel to give things up. It's probably pretty obviously obvious what I've done to give up for Lent but I'm really just getting ready for Christmas. These are unusual times. What have people had to give up? I have been working at a safe distance with a neighbour building a fence. Not to confine me, but to confine his sheep. Think of the ways that we have been confined, inhibited. No interaction, no travel, no work. I personally struggle to really understand a lot of those difficulties because I am privileged. I have retired, I have a home, I have space to move and things to do, and I am well. But let us pray for those around us. Heavenly Father, thank you for life. So often we take our privileges and our pleasures for granted. We know from your pre teachings that you know about life and loss, freedom and sacrifice. We pray for your grace, love and spirit of forgiveness. We pray for your strength to strengthen us and to guide us. We pray at this time for this world and its struggles. We pray for those who have lost jobs and can't find work for shattered financial lives, for shattered mental lives, those who have lost life from COVID-19, lost loved ones and can't grieve in fellowship, lost homes because of no income, lost hope because of no financial security. For those in fear of the unknown, for those who need space for sanity, and now the space is gone. Kids home from school, partners home from work, no time, no space, no money, and maybe for some, no hope. We pray for those undergoing treatment for cancer and other health issues, or should be having treatment, that they are safe, cared for, and loved. We pray too for all those putting their lives on the line at this time. We think of doctors, nurses, ambos, teachers, checkout chicks, police. I particularly pray for the families and close colleagues of the four police killed in the road accident in Melbourne on Wednesday. And for those who have given their lives in the past as we remember Anzac Day. We pray for our government, our leaders, our health and our financial experts that they be, may be led by your spirit to know the right things to do to bring us through this very difficult time. Help us to be aware of how we can reach out to respond, to relieve, to remove the fences. Help us to be patient, caring and compassionate. Through your Son, you showed us how to react and respond. May we learn and live it. Amen. Well, this side of Easter, Welcome as we gather around the table, my table, your table, wherever you are today, we gather at the invitation of Jesus. If you're not already prepared, I invite you to go and find some elements that can represent the, the blood and the, the body of Jesus Christ so that we can share in this in a moment together. But come, Jesus invites you here, you who are in need of his grace, all are welcome around this table as we come to gather, to remember, and to celebrate. 
So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have been with us through every step of this week. But we invite you afresh to be with us this morning, to be present with us just as you were around the table with the disciples all those years ago, that you would make yourself known to us afresh today as we break this bread and drink from this cup. You are a God who lives and reigns, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's hear again the words of the institution of this sacrament that Paul recorded in 1 Corinthians 11 from verse 23. For the teaching I gave you is the same that I received from the Lord. That on the night when the Lord Jesus was handed over to be killed, he took bread and gave thanks for it. Then he divided the bread and said, This is my body. It is for you. Eat this to remember me. In the same way, after they ate, Jesus took the cup of wine. He said, This cup represents the new agreement from God, which begins with my blood sacrifice. When you drink this, do it to remember me. This means that every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are telling others about the Lord's death until he comes again. And so today, according to Jesus' command, we set aside the bread and the cup, these ordinary elements, for this sacrament, this holy supper that we're about to share. Let's continue to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you're a God of all creation, that you were there at the beginning, that you created the world good, and that you gave us a choice. We thank you for your faithfulness to us, even when generation after generation we've turned our backs on you and gone our own way. We thank you that at the appointed time you came in the life of Jesus Christ, that you lived and taught and showed us the way, that you died for our sins, that you rose from the dead. And we thank you that you didn't leave us alone, but you poured out the gift of your Holy Spirit on us and on all people. So we pray that you pour out your spirit afresh today on these gifts of the bread and the cup, that for us they become the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. You unite us with, with him and each other. Amen. Will you pray with me the prayer Jesus taught us to pray? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As you take the bread or what represents the bread and the cup in your homes. The bread that we break today is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup that we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God, today and always. So I'll give you a moment in your home, if there's a few of you, to, to distribute the elements, the body and the blood of Christ. Hold on to those and in a few moments after a time of reflection, we will eat and drink those together.
So let's receive what we are and become what we receive, the body of Christ. And as we take the cup, the blood of Jesus Christ poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. Let's drink and be thankful. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that although we don't fully understand it, you meet us here, that you are forever with us, that your blood washes and cleanses us of our sin, that you are the bread of life that sustains us. We thank you most of all for your ultimate sacrifice, your love poured out for us on the cross, that we might live. So thank you, Jesus. Amen. Today's reading comes from Acts chapter 4, verses 23 to 35. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? All the kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. All the believers were in one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. There were no needy persons among them, for from time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as he had need. This is the word of the Lord. Well, in this season of hope, today's message is doors closed, hearts open. This is an unprecedented season for the church. Our doors are closed, but it doesn't stop us being the church, the people of God, as we learnt last week. And we are that people built on a firm foundation, as witnesses of Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Our doors are closed, but our hearts are must remain open in this season. You know, it's one thing for the community to notice the number of cars out the front of the church as they drive by a chunga on a Sunday morning. But that's just one expression of, of our faith and who we are as a church. What if we were known, not just for the number of cars out the front, but for who we are? That's something that we can be known for in this season, as much or if more so, than at any other time. And this is something that's expressed in the early church, who were known for their open hearts. As they waited on that promise of the Holy Spirit to be witnesses to Jesus and to take the good news to the world. In Acts 2, we see that they had open hearts to receive that gift. The Holy Spirit was poured out on them and on all people and they were empowered with great boldness and to be the hands and feet of Jesus. They had hearts open, hearts to receive, but also hearts to love. At the end of Acts 2, we read a picture of this early church and who they are. 
We're told that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Like us, for many of those early followers, they hadn't necessarily walked with Jesus in the flesh. They hadn't heard his teaching direct, so they needed to be effective witnesses, to devote themselves to the teachings of those who'd gone before. So they did devote themselves to the apostles' teaching, to be effective witnesses. They immersed themselves in the life of Jesus, just like we can, the best that they could. They devoted themselves to fellowship, we're told, something that we can't do right at this moment in the same way. But we're also told that as a result of that infilling of the Holy Spirit and of being community, that they did something miraculous. That all the believers were together, we're told in verse 44, and they had everything in common. Verse 45, they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. It was not a matter of, I've worked hard to earn this. And so I'll hold it tightly. It was a matter of what's mine is yours. It's ours. Their generosity, their open hearts just flowed from being a church who are witnesses of Jesus, empowered by the Holy Spirit. An incredible picture of community. In verse 46, we're told that they didn't do this begrudgingly, but that as they gathered together and ate, they did it with glad and sincere hearts. They kept praising God and as a result, they enjoyed favor and God added to their number daily those who were being saved. Hearts open. Hearts open to receive. Hearts open to give. A few chapters later in Acts 4 in our reading today and just before it, Peter and John had been jailed overnight because they were preaching that Jesus had risen from the dead. The Jewish elders and the teachers of the law, they couldn't deny that these men had been with Jesus. They were blown away at their witnesses, at their witness and what they could see happening, the miracles. But they commanded John and Peter not to speak again in Jesus' name. And they released them. Can you imagine what it was like to be those first disciples at this time? They've got this good news of Jesus. They've been his witnesses. They know that it's good for the world. They've seen his saving power. They've witnessed his miracles. They've been filled and empowered with the Holy Spirit. And they were really seeing God at work. They can't help but share this good news. But now they're being told they cannot share it. But notice their response in verse 24. They pray and they speak to God and they say, Sovereign Lord. They don't speak to God as if he's somehow forgotten them or distant. He's sovereign. He is in control. They acknowledge that. And in verse 29, they pray faithfully to this sovereign God that he would make a way. And verse 31 says, After they had prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke, of, spoke the word of God boldly. This was the incredible power as they trusted in him. The boldness, the confidence that they had by the Holy Spirit. But here's the fruit. Again, from verse 32, we're given a picture of what this early church looked like. We're told that all the believers were one in heart and mind. That no one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything that they had. They testified to the resurrection of Jesus. And then it tells us that God's grace was so powerful at work in them that there was no needy persons among them. From time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them. They brought the money from their sales and they put it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to anyone who had need. What an incredible picture. What an incredible picture of generosity, of hearts that were open. It's as if they were to say, you know what? All that I have has been given by God. They recognize that fact. 
And, and they didn't just sit back and say, you know, I'm going to hold on to this until there is the right cause. But they were willing to bring that to the apostles' feet. And as that money was pulled together, it was distributed according to needs. What a beautiful picture of generosity. What a beautiful picture of open and generous hearts. This is the church that we are called to be. A church that is willing to share everything we have so that there are no needy persons among us. Closed doors, but open hearts in this season and beyond. Now, in case we're wondering, this wasn't just something that was a, a characteristic of the church in those first few weeks or years after the Holy Spirit came. Michael Frost, in the opening of his short book, Surprise the World, which some of us have read, he writes this of the early church. They devoted themselves to sacrificial acts of kindness. They loved their enemies and forgave their persecutors. They cared for the poor and fed the hungry. In the brutality of life under Roman rule, they were the most stunningly different people anyone had ever seen. Again, hearts open. Michael Frost goes on to write about the response of Emperor Julian in the 4th century. He says, Julian was concerned that the Christians' act of hospitality and philanthropy were winning too many of his subjects. He decided to launch an offensive against them by mobilizing his officials and the pagan priesthood to outlove the Christians. He decreed that a system of food distribution be started and that hostels be built for poor travelers. Did you catch that? Uh, the, the emperor recognizes that the love and the hospitality that were welling up in the Christians, the good that they were doing, and he sets up some competition. They were known by their love and their open hearts. Needless to say, though, that the emperor's efforts failed. They lacked motivation, the motivation that had come from Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, and they couldn't compete. They couldn't outlove those first Christians. So there's precedent, there's example from the early church, empowered by the Holy Spirit as witnesses to be open-hearted and generous. There should be no needy among us. What's mine is yours, it's ours. That should be our heart and our effort. We are called to be generous and shine light in this time. Now I need to acknowledge that I, I know that some of us at this time and at different seasons of our lives find ourselves uh, so consumed with, uh, with what's going on in our own life, our households and the needs, that the thought of, of giving more is just too much. We acknowledge that uh, in this season there are those going through health crises, uh, whether it's physical or mental. Uh, we acknowledge that there are those who, uh, whose circumstances are just uh, overwhelming in this time and, and, and just to keep afloat or to, to take a breath is, is huge. For you, I encourage you to reach out. Because uh, in, a, in a church uh, where we are empowered by the Holy Spirit and generous, in a time when we can't communicate like we normally would, uh, we need to know when there are needs. Uh, many people are here saying, oh, there's plenty worse off than I am. But this is a time to reach out. If there are needy amongst us, and if you are one of them, or if there are needs that you come across, reach out. Don't be afraid to do that. There is plenty of resource and generosity and love that could be shared and maybe it's just you who needs to receive it at this time. So where do we start? Where do we start in this season of hope, in this season of isolation, where things are different, to love our neighbours? It can be overwhelming as we look at the world and think, you know, what can I do? Well, can I remind you, as I've spoken of before, that in the, in the early church, uh, the Greek word for an extended household is the word oikos. And that was a group of 8 to 15 people. It might include your immediate family or some extended family, maybe some servants. 
And that was the model that the gospel often spread. 8 to 15 people in your life. Who are they? That is where we must start. You don't have to change the world, but you can change your world. Open hearts within your extended household, your oikos. That may be your direct neighbours. You know, only you border those neighbours. You have an opportunity to connect and to love them. It may be the widow or, or the, uh, the single mom or dad, the single parent that you know that, that you can reach out to who's in need. It may be your hairdresser. Who is it in your extended household, the 8 to 15 people you have influence over? That is where we must start. And how do we do that? How do we love and have open hearts in this time? Well, I'm just really encouraged, even this week, the work of our pastoral care team in, in being generous, the generosity of, of people giving gifts to support that, that loving work, being able to bless people with, uh, with, with produce and with, with gifts of money and all sorts of things have already been happening as we've extended that love. I'm encouraged to hear of people making extra phone calls around the district. Keep up that great work. It's so encouraging. You're living this out. If you're looking for more ideas, Michael Frost wrote a recent blog post with some ways that we can love our neighbour in this season. There are ongoing needs. The, the fires only happened very recently. So there were still people reeling and recovering uh, from those needs and now faced with isolation. There are organisations like NAN Fire Support that are continuing to give and seek volunteer support. We can always be generous. We can do things like picking up the phone. We've all got a phone. Who is it that today or even each day you can pick up the phone and intentionally call to bless or to ask how you're going really? And there's one thing that we can all do, no matter our health or our age, and that's to pick up our greatest weapon, these. Our greatest weapon is not used in any other way but than this or this. It's to be on our knees and pray. Because for all of the practical good we can do, that, that can go so far. I mean, it's nice to bless our neighbours, it's nice to give. But as we pray, it, it is more than just a physical, practical gift that is given. As we pray, we recognise that our gift is just one part of the story, that it's God's transforming work that will go and use that gift or that phone call or that conversation to bring transformation and hope into people's lives. So for every act of kindness, I encourage you to pray Pray in preparation and continue to pray for that gift and for that phone call and for that person of that situation as you go beyond there. As we give a gift, don't be afraid to, uh, to let them know that you're motivated by uh, the love of Jesus in giving that. Don't worry about your say. We're told in the Bible that the Holy Spirit will speak for us. And we're also encouraged to always be ready. 1 Peter 3, 14 to 16, it says, But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. And then this, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Always be ready. Always be prepared. Our faith should not be private, especially in this time. Pray, be bold, be empowered by the Holy Spirit. The story we tell in this time will shine a great light. People need to hear that Jesus is for them, that the church and that Christians are for them, 
so different to the other stories that are told in the media. You, we, amongst our oikos, our 8 to 15 people, can shine that light. Prayer is a powerful weapon. These are the most powerful weapon we have. As we give and have open hearts and open hands, let's continue to pray. Let's be generous in this season to shine his light. I'll say it again. This is our time to shine. We're going to reflect on a song, and this will be a song that will be new to most of you. So if it helps, just listen and reflect. It's a song that's a prayer, but you might be able to join in, in the chorus as this invites God to heal our land. This is our time to shine. So let's pray and help our hearts be open that this season will be one that will be remembered where we shone brightly and offered hope and offered love. So let's sit back, reflect and pray. Heal our land. You take our lives, flawed yet beautiful, restored, refined, Lord, you're merciful, redeemed.
So as you go today and into this week, go with the hope of God and the power of the Holy Spirit to shine your light in the darkness. And as you go, and as we go, to take that light wherever we go, go in peace, giving your all to him as you love and serve him this week. God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit shines with you and within you. Amen.